Hi everybody, I am Pavlozov from www.c4d.cz and welcome to this free tutorial. This is a mid-level tutorial. It's not too difficult, however it needs some skill and is intended for all Cinema 4D broadcast or studio users. The first part of the tutorial can be followed by everybody because it shows Cinema 4D Prime package features only. Ok, let's start. Cinema 4D offers uh, many very interesting shaders and many of them are used very often. On the other hand, there are some less often used shaders as well. Proximal shader is one of them. It's a special effect that's able to generate a very special collision maps. Ok, how does it work? Create new material, just double click uh, uh, the material manager field and turn off the color shade uh, channel and do the same for the specular. Load the proximal shader to the luminance channel. You'll find an FX menu and activate the luminance channel first of course. And that's all for now. And create a simple parametric polygon object. Adjust its size, use 400 in both directions. Apply the material we made and there, there will be another object and this object will collide with the polygon object. Use a parameter cube for example, it will play a collider rule. We can scale it down a bit and adjust its segments. That's enough for us, I think. Its subdivision can affect uh, a generated map look. The textured object subdivision is not so important. Ok, uh, uh, let's open material editor again and uh, drag and drop the cube object here. And let's try the effect. However, it's not finished yet, just test it. Use interactive and the region for it. Uh, check the effect area shape we got, it has a circle shape. A collision is already here, but it's not based on the cube structure, its points, edges and so on. It's based on its axis position only. So we need to use real geometry instead. Activate use vertices, edges and polygon radius option as well. And last but not, not last, convert the object to an editable state. It's necessary, uh, otherwise it doesn't see the internal object structure. Ok, we can use vertices, edges and polygons here. The function value controls use fall off. We can change it and test all others as well. Let's try inverse square and it shows object vertices pretty well here. Try others if you want. I will use the square option like before. And we can set the start distance and end distance values. Don't care about percent values here. It means your preferred units, centimeters in my case. And uh, the intensity value is the last. OK, back to the blend mode. It's, uh, it says use blending mode here. Add or screen modes are usually used here. However, you can use any other. It's really up to you. OK, uh, the effect works pretty well, as you can see. Just make a sure conclusion. The proximal shader can analyze an object structure and object axis as well. It's very important because a particle flow can be analyzed in this way. So let's say a particle flow will hit the surface and it will be affected by these particles. It sounds very really interesting, I think. Before we start with, with a particle setup, let's test another more complicated mesh. Just try a truth object, for example. Scale it down, convert it and place it in the object field here. Delete the cube object. That's all, I rotate it a bit. And yes, it works really well. The tools object hits the surface and it generates this shape around both intersections. Ok, we can vary the end parameter, however, we are ready for the first task. That's really all. Delete the tools object and we don't need it anymore. And we can rename the plane, type helper instead of the default name. We will use it in a different way. It will generate a collision texture only, but the object itself will be not rendered. And Use the simulate menu and create a new particle emitter from the particles submenu. Rotate the emitter and be sure it's aligned uh, the right way. Uh, set the object and adjust its size. It must fit the helper object size. Use 400 units for both directions again. And move the emitter up a bit. And that's all. The emitter will emit particle flow and we can control its look here. Make distribution longer, set the stop emission value to 300 frames and we can adjust the speed value as well and test the result. Perfect! Adjust the project settings as well, press Ctrl plus D and adjust the maximum time value to 300 here and use the same for the preview. 
uh, frame rate value is isn't important for us for now so leave it as it is and open the shader settings again and we can turn off all structure elements options and drag and drop and place the emitter inside the object field here only particle axes are important for us and let's play the animation and as a result it works as well as you can see it's very interesting our particle flow has the texture surface and it generates a dynamic collision texture and we can take the texture and use it in another way and it can adjust another surface or an effect hide the helper object both options and create a new parametric plane object the object size should be the same as the helper increase both segments values up use 60 for example press the shift key and create a new displacer deformer it will be placed as a child of the plane done so the displacer and go to attributes manager settings and use shading tab and change the channel parameter here use the luminance instead of the custom shader option and drag and drop and place the helper's texture tag to the link field here and great the plane object is affected already it works we got a very interesting effect it was still pretty easy i think it's not a real effect yet however we can imagine it uh, as rain hitting a water surface okay set the deformer again and use the object tab and we can change the displacer type here use intensity instead of intensity centered it will shift object points in a positive direction only and we can adjust the height value we can use a negative value here perfect and we can improve the effect by other deformers and they can help us to improve the current look of the simulation so it's enough for now we get the main state of the effect and let's continue we will improve the effect as we said before we need to generate the spring effect secondary ripple waves and so on let's imagine a drop will hit the surface it generates the main movement it will generate a spring ripple effect and it sprays around the hit point however it's a simulation only so we will generate the spring effect only and we can use another deformer object for that and this deformer is called jingle so the plane object press the shift and create a new jingle deformer and change our deformers order place the jingle as the second and we can adjust the stiffness value a bit perhaps okay and let's test it yes it's much be better than before i think uh, the displacer deformer effect is too depth i guess so solid deformer go to the object tab and reduce the value here it's too high yes it's much better okay uh, set the jingle and we can adjust the strain value it will adjust the secondary ripple intensity it has higher ripple intensity now okay and we can play with the drag value and so on perfect I'm of everything is possible okay the spring scan value is probably the last thing that can be improved expand the advanced sub tab here and we can increase the spring springs value here and increase iterations value as well and test the result it's pretty nice I think so open the use material and we can colorize the proximal uh, effect gradient and use a bit uh, better follow shape so uh, the proximal generates the main gradient and we can use another shader that will adjust this shape go up and load the colorizer shader here it will load the proximal automatically and open its settings and adjust its colors use pure white and pure black colors again of course however we can adjust the interpolation mode use exponent down for example and that's the result I like it it looks really nice okay we are at the end of the first example we got uh, a pretty nice and complex effect what's next we are using the proximal shader as a deform effect now it's affecting a polygon surface is the plane at the moment however nobody says we cannot use it in a different way let's say the shader can affect a MoGraph cloner object as well and all its generated instances as you said before the second example needs Cinema 4 Demograph module. Okay, let's start. Turn off the plane object and all its deformers. 
and we will reverse the effect a bit, create a new MoGraph cloner object. So the cloner object, press the shift key and create a new cube object, it will be placed as a child of the cloner as usual. We can use another object of course, adjust the object size, it can be pretty small. Set 10 in all directions and so the cloner object we must adjust it. Change uh, the mode, use grid array mode here. Use the cubic form option, adjust the x size, use 400 units and set it the same in z. Uh, reduce the uh, Y account value, use 1 here. Activate the render instance option, it will speed up the editors uh, a lot. And here the last increase the X and Z count values, use 50 in both directions and we must adjust the cube size a bit. 6 will be perfect I guess. Done. It's enough. What's next? Just imagine a MoGraph cloner object can be affected by many effectors. So select the cloner object and use the MoGraph menu and create a new shader effector from the effector submenu. Great. The effector is added and linked automatically to the cloner. The shader effector is able to use another external source like procedural shader or another texture sample like proximal. Ok, select the effector and go to attributes manager settings shading tab. Uh, change the channel value to the luminous channel and drag and drop the same tag like before here. And let's play the animation. We can check scale adjustments here. It depends on the particle hits. A particle hits a surface. Proximal gener generates a sample gradient and a effector takes the shader color and it will temporarily adjust the instance scale. We can use a vertical movement here as well. Just adjust the Y position value. Yes, it's well visible now. It's here a very nice movement. Ok, perfect. Let's say we would like to improve the effect a bit. We would like to build a ripple wave effect like before, so we will use another effector for that. Ok, select the cloner like before and create a new delay effector. And set the delay and continue to the effector tab and change the mode parameter here, use spring option. And increase the strength. Then, it's a perfect looking effect. It's very interesting. So the shader effector and we can still add another affected parameter. Uh, use the scale, uniform scale option and set the scale value to 2. Then we got a really cool effect. Altio is still not all. We can colorize the instance field with the effect as well. Because almost every effector can affect instance color as well. So set the uh, shader effector and change the color mode option. Use on value here. And that's the reason, don't worry, it will work. And activate the use of a strength and test it once more time, but nothing happens. The settings will adjust instance color. The question is how? Change the blending mode value here, use the add and create a new material and apply the material to the object. Open its settings and we can use the luminance channel only, like before. So load a special MoGraph color shader here. And this shader takes an instance color get generated by affected effectors. Uh, the shader effector affects cloner instances color. The color shader analyzes these instances colors and we can use another shader like colorizer and set the look we need. Load colorizer shader here. Ok, open its settings and test the current look first. It's perfect. In case an instance goes up, it's getting yellow. Ok, open the gradient and delete the black knot and move the red knot to the left. And test it once more. Render the current look, I like it. So we are on the end of the tutorial. Let's render a short animation. It will prove uh, if the U solution works or not. Open the render settings, change the frame range mode. Change the two value, use 179 frames here and close the settings and uh, render the scene into the picture viewer. Ok, it's done. So play the animation. Perfect. As you said before, we are at the end uh, of the lesson. We have learned how to use uh, Proxima Shader and we have found it's a very interesting feature of Cinema 4D. We have seen it has a wide variety of use and it can solve 
many very interesting tasks. Let's imagine we can simulate an MBA occlusion effect with the shader and it produces a really cleaner result. Thank you for watching and see you at www.c4d.cz.